Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Fluid shows that's only starts best vassals. I'm a useful idiot, and uh, today I want to talk about the fact that the soundtrack to the New World Order surrounds us every day. And uh, the reason why I say that is because uh, I've been thinking of all the pop music that's around now, particularly a lot of uh, pop music that I get exposed to that is, uh, has nothing to do with what I listen to personally, but it's just uh, things that I'm exposed to in my environment. And uh, I came to some interesting conclusions, and uh, I came up with three main points as to why I've decided we are being exposed to a soundtrack to the New World Order. And uh, one are the, the methods that they use. Two is the uh, message that's being delivered. And three is the, the locale. And by the, the locale, I mean the fact that we live in an environment where we are saturated with music and sound 24-7. So, uh, first of all, let me talk about the methods. And that is, uh, number one, methods. And the methods are the fact that we have all these different genres where everything is very digitally processed. And it really doesn't matter whether it's country or uh, heavy metal, or punk, or dance, or electronic, or rap, or whatever. Um, it's all very heavily digitized. Um, there's a lot of uh, drum machines, there's a lot of keyboards, there's a lot of bass samples, there's a lot of samples, um, screaming guitar solos, everything's processed, the vocals are processed, there's vocorders, pitch correctors, reverb, um, any number of effects. And, uh, and including vocal samples and vocal effects and uh, multi-tracking of vocals and uh, all, all manner of, uh, of ways to uh, adjust this material. But more importantly, a lot of this material can be generated by a handful of studio musicians and a producer. And a lot of it can even be just a producer and his engineer uh, with uh, a lot of uh, electronic and dance and rap music. Of course, we just have keyboards and uh, drum machines, and um, so it's easy for them to assemble it and then uh, put a face to the music. There's plenty of entertainers that are lining up to work with these kind of production teams and this kind of machinery, and um, if there is not an entertainer, uh, these producers and this machinery will find an entertainer and create a face for their, uh, for their product. Uh, the, the likes of Keisha, Lady Gaga, and the like that we have now in a time-honored tradition, much like Madonna. So the overall topic is about corporatization of music, but that's a very broad topic. And um, corporatization of music has been with us pretty much as long as music's been with us. And uh, that's a uh, topic that I probably will do a video on in the future. But uh, so anyway, we have these methods. And um, and of course, the, uh, the image and the facade is everything with all this music. So the videos, the right look, um, they have makeup artists and uh, um, public relations people and uh, wardrobe people and everything to maintain the archetypes, and the, these corporate images. So you know, country stars all have this absolute complete archetype, bigger than life cartoon country look. And the uh, heavy metal singers all have the archetype heavy metal uh, cartoon archetype look. We have the punks, the, uh, the corporate punks, and uh, and then of course all the divas. And the divas look the same whether they're doing dance music or metal music or punk music or country music. And uh, sex continues to sell, so that's always an important element and certainly would be an important element all this music of the, uh, the uh, New World Order, the soundtrack to the New World Order. You know, and I'm not suggesting necessarily that it's conscious as a new world order. It's just rather convenient that uh, we have all these corporate interests uh, that are delivering a homogenous message to all spectrum of society through what ostensibly are different types of music but have a huge commonality. And, of course, really fascist music is easy to spot. We have all the rave music and electronics and bass and drum and in a very uh, functional, very fascist, um, very totalitarian. Then we even have a DJ culture where people who play records that were made by other people are now stars. And uh, and we live in an age too where the term genius and artist is thrown around for all these people and they are entertainers. Um, 
it's all entertainment, and it's all part of the entertainment spectrum. And that's another reason why we know this is part of the uh, soundtrack of the New World Order. And that's that's where we get to number two, message. And uh, the message that's being delivered is uh, easy to spot because it's it's uh, common in all this music that uh, basically you go to your job, you work at a job you don't like, um, and then when you get off work, um, you go and you party and you drink a lot and you spend your last dime and you dance and you go home with somebody you don't know and then you go back to work the next day and um, so that's the general message it doesn't really matter whether it's uh, metal or country I'm um, sure you can throw in some uh, references to Satan and violence for, to, to appeal to adolescent young boys and metal and you know you can have heartbreaking cowboy stories and country music but uh, Essentially, the message is the same, and I find it interesting that um, the idea of living the paycheck to paycheck is uh, an accepted lifestyle in a lot of this music, and uh, drinking every night is an accepted part of this lifestyle, and dancing all night is an accepted part of this lifestyle, and most importantly, the message about forget about your troubles, don't worry about your taxes, don't worry about the wars, don't worry about the government. Um, in country, the political message, of course, is very overt. You know, they talk about love it or leave it and how much they don't like Muslims and, and uh, uh, liberals are assholes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, country has definitely delivered a very highly uh, political uh, highly political message, and it, and it has a particular agenda, and anyone that doubts that can look at the fact that the uh, uh, Dixie Chicks were ostracized for saying they were embarrassed that Bush was um, from the same state as them, and they were ostracized by their audience, and yet uh, Hank Williams, of course, can bash Obama, and now he's a hero. He's probably having record sales, so there is a political agenda. And um, to uh, go back to the message, though, um, you know, party all night and uh, just be pretty and die young, and uh, so... Uh, uh, interesting message, uh, commonality, and uh, something, of course, that uh, corporate interests would uh, probably uh, feel pretty good about. And, and the, the methods used, too, also reflect the fact that repetition and sound bites and nursery rhyme lyrics and uh, simplistic ideas, um, jingoistic ideas, uh, all tools of propaganda. So all of this stuff um, falls into the category of uh, traditional classic propaganda techniques too and, and certainly nobody can deny the overlap between uh, politics and uh, show business and uh, so there's another connection between this uh, this government agenda uh, the military agenda the, the music agenda and the Hollywood agenda and you see this in the propaganda war movies coming out of Hollywood and political agendas coming out of the mouths of celebrities and, um, you know, we also see uh, the fact that uh, they they all have a smoke and mirrors. They're all acting. It's all a show. And uh, that's what they all have in common. So it's not a surprise that Hollywood and uh, pop music and, and uh, the military and entertainment and government and all these people would all be in it together because uh, it generates a lot of money. And that's what this is all about. And they create these... Uh, these uh, stables of icons and um, continue to milk them in these mass cross-marketing campaigns. So that's another reason why corporate America um, in all its sectors and government, politics, and everyone has a lot to uh, win or lose um, because these, uh, these stars have wielded so much power that uh, they can generate money for all kinds of different sectors of society. And we see this, you know, watch your average football game and we have a, a glorification of the military along with uh, huge sports um, franchises and uh, heavy metal music and country music and all these commercials and it's all just one big blend and it's a feel-good moment so people uh, get lulled. And uh, that's what this whole environment, uh, constant uh, music too. And, and speaking of environment, um, as I was alluding to earlier, and I've talked about, you know, you go on your iPad, you go on your cell phone, you go on video games, you go on 
um, movies, big, your giant TVs, your DVDs, your computers, your iPods, on your automobiles, you're in a constant environment of uh, inundation with all of this type of corporate music. And this corporate music also includes the nostalgia industry. Um, they have a huge stockpile of music uh, that keeps getting remarketed in different formats over and over and over again. And they keep cashing in and different ways of uh, cashing in and uh, very vicious about their copyright controls. But uh, um, that's another um, part of this uh, quotient is uh, milking the old iconography a la the Rolling Stones and Rod Stewart and the like. And the other part of this too is that it's a global phenomenon. America certainly has exported this um, pop trash culture worldwide and uh, we are tops, but uh, Japan certainly has a thriving pop trash culture as does India, Latin America, and Europe. And um, so we see this as a global phenomenon. And another reason why I would suggest this is a uh, soundtrack to the New World Order. So, uh, so anyway, there we have it. There's my uh, overview of the fact that we are constantly surrounded by its corporate product, and there is a singular message, and uh, it's not necessarily a good one. And um, welcome to the new world order. Dance, dance, dance. Forget about your troubles. Spend your last time. Spend your last dime, and uh, go home with somebody you don't know. I'm useful idiot. Don't you be one too.